what we are going to look at in this lesson is um, a few things. Let's start with uh, with this, for example. Let's say we want to add um, add age um, to this to this method, okay? And let's try and run this first without um, doing anything else and see what errors we get. So make sure you're in Ruby. Is a Ruby main? We have an error: undefined local variable or method age. Okay, so this basically is saying that we have not um, put this in the argument. So I say age, put it there. All right, so let's try it again. So it says wrong number of arguments. We've given one when two is required. Okay, so that's how you read that error message there. So we're given one there, so we need to give two. So we have Ken and 30. So let's run this again. My name is Ken, I am 30 years old. So now that works. Um, of course, years old. <laughs> and um, everything is fine, that is old, good, good. So we have these two variables, name and age, okay? But this is where we are calling it from. But the thing is, I'm gonna have to, I'm having to memorize the order that is given. But what happens if I said this way, introduce 30? So now it says, my name is 30, I am 10 years old, which doesn't make any sense at all. Now, to solve uh, this problem, we basically need to use a different type of argument. Okay, so we need to give, um, let's put this back to where it was. So there, there's another type of argument that's a named argument. So we'll put colon in front of the, the, the names, which is basically something like this. Okay, um, so this is a method, uh, this is a named um, argument which has a value false. So now that we have a named argument, um, let's see what happens when we try to run our method again. So now it says we have a wrong number of arguments, we've given two arguments when zero is required, which is strange. Okay, so the, the problem here is there's a difference between arguments and named arguments, okay? So what we now need to do, once we have colons in front of our arguments, we need to uh, give them names when we call them. So we say name is Ken and age is 30. So it has to have that uh, those keywords there. So now when we run it, it says, my name is Ken, I am 30 years old. So that's expected. Now let's try rearranging this and see what happens. So I'll take this here and I paste it here. Okay, and now when we run it, it's still correct. My name is Ken, I'm 30 years old. So now we have um, an idea of a named parameter. So, but what happens if uh, we decide to maybe, uh, um, maybe for now, if we just come over here, we could get rid of this, uh, save this, and try to run it. And Ruby main, so it says missing keywords. So now we have another word uh, to add to our vocabulary, so keywords. So name and age are referred to as keywords. Okay, so this is a keyword, this is a keyword, but together they are named arguments or named keywords. All right, so there we go. So we have um, this error there because we haven't put anything, but we could avoid that error by having default values. So when we call introduce um, and we don't supply anything, we say we want it to default to name is Kingsley and age is 32. All right, let's try calling it one more time. So there we go. We have name is Kingsley, I'm 32 years old. All right, so um, we've had a look at method named arguments. We can put name Danielle there. And when we run it, it says, my name is Danielle, I'm 32 years old. So we've basically uh, passed in just the name um, keyword. So that's replaced this here, but it's retained uh, the 32 years old. Uh, so that's uh, essentially um, 
why we have colons in front. So there are named arguments. So if you can make a note of that, named arguments, that's what this is. But then we have these ones. We have colons at, at the back of the words. So let's see what that is about. So essentially, those are strings, okay? If I change this to that and try and run it, you notice it runs just normally. So it says, my name is Daniel, I'm 32 years old. <clears throat> so why why do we need uh, two ways of doing exactly the same thing? If it's, but it's not exactly uh, the same. Let's have a look and, and see. So in Ruby, everything is an object, right? So we have Daniel as a string, but it has an object ID since everything is an object. So if I save this and I run it, I expect to see an object ID. I need to print it, which I always forget. So that is the object ID for that string, okay? But if I copy this and paste it a few times and try to run it again, you'll notice we have different IDs each time. Now, this is not an efficient use of memory, okay? Especially since we are dealing with exactly the same string, Daniel, 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 every time, okay? So every time we create a new object, we are uh, using up memory space. All right, so let's see the alternative. So if we put a colon in the beginning, making it a symbol, and then we try to run it again, it has an ID. So we'll copy this a few times and then we try to run it again, you notice now we have exactly the same IDs. So symbols basically remembers the IDs and uh, reuses exactly the same object. So we're saving memory space. We're not having to create lots and lots of objects. Okay, so that's why we have the, the symbols in front. So this uh, full name, for example, is, um, is just a string is equivalent to something like this, okay? But it's just a more efficient string. So that covers this. We understand the colon in front, we've done that. Um, we can undo this, and we can try and see what we can do with um, our newly acquired knowledge of symbols. So let's say study accepts uh, an argument and we could use our interpolation here. Name is going to come in here. Um, we'll give it a default value. So if we call study without giving it anything, it will get, take Kingsley as a symbol. So we can change here too. So um, it's also an efficient string. All right, so um, we can just give this a name anyways and say Daniel, so it matches. And uh, we have everything is there, so let's try and run this. And something didn't work. I've forgotten my single quotation. So it really needs to be double quotation when you're dealing with um, lots of more than one character. <laughs> my bad habit don't learn that so there we go my name is daniel um daniel started software testing so it's perfect it works so that's what symbols are there for okay so um i can change this to daniel it's still exactly the same thing it works exactly the same way but it's just uh, inefficient use because new object is created for these two even though they're exactly the same things all right, so we can uh, change it back to symbols. So this is much more efficient to use. And we now understand what the colon uh, in front and behind mean. Um, so we've conquered this and we've conquered this. So next we have to conquer is this, it's called a block. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson.